Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we are doing engine braking. Now, there's going to be two videos to this. There's going to be two videos to this, and uh, those two videos are going to consist of a four stroke and a two stroke one. Now, we're going to do the four stroke one first because it is far easier to understand because obviously four strokes split each cycle um, up. Where if we do the four stroke one first and then do the two stroke one, you'll have an easier understanding and then you'll be able to see the issues with a two stroke um, engine braking. So, how does the whole thing work? So, you have a port with a valve in it, shitty valve, I know, and then you have a cylinder. Now we're only interested in the import uh, intake for the time being and I'll, ex I'll explain why but we're gonna go suck, squeeze, bang, pop so we might as well start with suck and what happens is, is normally is you have a, thro a, you know, a throttle butterfly and for the engine speed um, your uh, throttle position is um, relatable, let's just say that and that's just not if you're accelerating, deaccelerating, that's just if you're holding that RPM so let's just say you're shooting along at three quarter throttle or something like that. So your throttle butterfly will be like this. And as you can see from that, um, there's a bit of a restriction here and a bit of a restriction here against the whole um, port area. So what happens is, is normally in an engine is the, the inlet valve opens and all your air flows around your valve, not very well done obviously, <laughs> flows around your valve and fills your uh, cylinder. Now weirdly enough there are always going to be some kind of what we call pumping losses, but what happens is is that your um, port in relation to your cylinder, so just say that's your cylinder, that's this cross section here, that cross section there, if we um, look at your port size, our inlet ports are something like that, obviously they're not very well <laughs> very well done and very equal, but you can see that you know, with your exhaust ports that aren't included in this operation, uh, in this stroke part of the cycle, you can see that this is an awful large surface area and these ports are a lot smaller than that, and there is a, relation, a ratio relationship and it alters between each engine depending on how many valves you have and so on and so forth but basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to fill this cylinder which is this volume or this surface area and this volume with a port that are you know, this small so obviously you are going to have some acceleration and some decreasing pressure because the flow will accelerate to fill this void as the piston goes down so there's always what we call pumping losses and where do these losses come from? the simple fact is, is your piston Let's just put your piston in. Your piston is on its way down, so it's on its way on the downstroke. Your crankcase is a volume as well, and as it comes down, it is reducing the volume in here and increasing it in here. So our volume, so V here is increasing, and V here is decreasing. And in a sense, you can kind of. Um, you can kind of see what's going on now. What's happening is your piston's coming down and it's compressing the crankcase. Now on two strokes and four strokes generally we have a crankcase breather. And you can also obviously if you have multiple cylinders because we share the same crank um, crankcase, then as one piston goes up and as one goes down, so it kind of there's there's flow backwards and forwards. And I will talk about that because people did ask about that. But there's kind of this wobbling of air, this current going backwards and forwards when you have engines like that. But your crankcase and breather basically, um, because of this instability and wobble and speeds and blah blah blah, basically you have a crankcase breather because you need to just kind of relief, uh, relieve the, the pulses that kind of happen inside this crankcase. But you're trying to fill this cylinder and the air in here is already in here because it's open to the outside atmosphere. You can pretty much guarantee, almost 100% guarantee, that the um, the air pressure in this uh, in your crankcase is one bar, it's atmospheric 
you know, as an average, as, as a mean. Obviously your cylinder isn't. It's going from atmospheric-ish when you're at um, bottom dead centre, when the valve closes, and then they compress it to, you know, 12 to 1. So that's 12 bar, and then you ignite it, and then it goes through the fucking roof. So the pressure inside your cylinder is obviously never stable. But when you, it's so fucking hot, I'm sorry, I'm, but uh, as the piston descends, what happens is, is that this pressure in here will resist because you think, well, this is, you know, this is filling up with air, this is equalising. It's not because, like I say, there is a restriction to this, so this is never, uh, it never equals what's at the bottom. So there's always going to be a slight pressure against here of one bar versus, let's just say, even half a bar here of pressure against your piston. So, you know, forces and equality and blah 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 and equilibrium and stuff, there is a force resisting um, this piston. And to help alleviate that, that's a lot of the times why I have crankcase breathers as well, just to um, basically, if you do push, it can piss out. So, because you have this problem like this, there's always some kind of pumping losses. Now, what happens is, is when you shut the throttle off, um, so your butterfly closes, and it, regardless if it's a carb or um, regardless is it, if it's a carb or injection, um, now we have which way was it? Is that way on it? Now we have almost entirely shut off our um, inlet port. We've literally nearly blanked off in the world and uh, when you look at it that's what your import would be um, that's kind of what you'd have as I just say as a cross section here and the amount of light so to speak would be this little sliver here this little tiny sliver there so you can see we've greatly reduced the amount of uh, flow surface area that we can get through this port so then this is why the same thing happens what happens is is minimal, minimal, absolutely fuck all air can get through this tiny gap. It accelerates like crazy, you know, um, so basically means it drops all its pressure and then, not all of it, but nearly, and then when it lands in here it expands like crazy because this is a, you know, this is a, a, a void that wasn't there a second ago and it's this that causes engine braking. So what happens is, is now you're not at half a bar, you probably at like one thirtieth, and that's just, uh, I'm just guessing here, that's just fucking, you know what I mean? Um, because we're talking about all engines generally. So at one thirtieth versus your, you know, your one bar, or maybe it's a hundredth, it, at the end of the day, it's fuck all. So the, the forces here are minuscule, little tiny force against, you know, your big one bar pressure here. And the piston's trying to go down. The piston's trying to, you know, accelerate downwards because the crank is basically pulling it down. And um, due to its momentum that the crank has, and it uses some of that um, stored energy in the flywheel and all the rest of it. So basically, what's happening is, you know, your piston's trying to push down a load of air, and it's creating a vacuum, as we call it. And that suction, the ability, of the the feeling that the piston wants to ride back up, is just all to do with this this pressure this force going that way. So, in absolute simple terms, that's your downward force, and that's your up force, when it, when in terms of pressure above and below the piston. Now, the, this can cause stuff like, uh, you, can, you, know, you can draw um, oil up into your cylinder and stuff like that. Sometimes when you do a lot of engine braking, if you ever notice, some people notice behind when they're behind people, you might see a bit a puff of smoke ever so slightly and that's because as you've drawn uh, very little pressure in here, this is very low pressure, I don't want to say the word vacuum, it's very 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 low pressure, what can happen is is that your uh, valve guides will start to leach a bit of oil and you'll get blow by but the other way around so where oil will creep up from the bottom of the crankcase, especially if you've got squirters uh, that squirt the side of the cylinder. Obviously, this isn't the way that the piston goes because we have the inertia, and when you add all that in, 
this is how much force oops what did I do that for this is how much force you have <laughs> so you can kind of see that your your um, not your inertia your momentum of the piston and the crankshaft pulling it down um, via the con rod and all the rest of it is a bigger force so your pistons aren't going down still your engine is still ticking over you're just making it very hard for it to do it you know what I mean um, so that's that the other thing that happens as well as you have your air resistance and rolling resistance and all the rest of it so now that you've gone down to the bottom you've hardly filled this combustion chamber with fuel and air you know fuck all really as you come back up um, you're compressing your mixture there's not much of it and then as soon as you ignite that because there isn't much you're not going to get much of a bang so it's kind of like a twofold you're choking the engine off uh, you're making it um, people think they say it's making it compress air it isn't your crankcase to a certain degree um, but uh, one of the ways you can increase engine braking is just block up your um, you won't really feel that much of a difference but you can you can block up your uh, crankcase breather just block it off totally and you'll feel a bit more engine braking um, but yeah on your compression stroke obviously you're not burning as much so on your power stroke again you're not really burning that much so there isn't that much energy in there so the bike starts to slow down and there's all these things nibbling away at this crankcase pressure that's resisting that piston wanting to go down you've got the you know the lack of combustion because you just shut the throttle off so you're basically starving the engine a bit oh Jesus Christ <laughs> it is hot I think it's like it's, it's the humidity that's the killer any roads stop fucking whinging um, and then on your exhaust stroke your exhaust valve opens and it's just it's just the same old deal you know you just push it back out if your throttle is still closed again on the next cycle obviously cause it will be because you know you might be going 5000 rpm or something crazy uh, there's you know the same thing happens and this repeating pumping of nothing in a sense um, is what causes your engines to slow down that's engine braking so I hope that I, uh, so I hope that's made it quite clear with all these silly lines and stuff of what's going on basically it's your crankcase pressure that's fighting you um, and the lack of combustion every time so you, 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 your engine's suffering of all the forces that are against it you know air resistance drag um, pumping losses in the crankcase the fact that you're starving the engine out of fuel mixture so when it actually does fire it's a bit of a wimpy purr, you know what I mean hope that makes sense the next video we'll do is on the two stroke engine braking and that's a lot more complicated that's why you need to understand this first that it's not about trying to suck a vacuum it's not this it's not this that's hard trying to pull a vacuum it's not anything to do with what's really going on here it's the exterior forces that are outside of that hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit